Visit our Nali Exhibition Virtual Booth. Just follow two simple steps to get there. First, you go to the Facebook page of Nali 2020. Second, you find the photo tabs and then click on the photo album of Nali 2020 Virtual Exhibition. You're now able to view all the posters of Nali practices in teaching and learning. Do enjoy our virtual exhibition booth and the poster with the most likes will be awarded the People's Choice Award. So visit us now and don't forget to like and share. Visit our Nali 2020 Symposium. Just follow this very simple step. First, check the Nali 2020 Symposium schedule in the website. Second, follow the schedule accordingly. Third, go to Facebook page Nali 2020. Fourth, you will see the pin post of the Symposium schedules accordingly in the pin post. Do enjoy your Symposium. You can also view all the session by first using the hashtag Nali 2020 Symposium or second, Find the photo tabs, then click on the timeline photo to view all the symposium presented by our participants. Do enjoy our virtual symposium session and ask questions directly to the speaker under the comment section and don't forget to like and share. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the virtual Dali 2020 plenary session online platform. I'm Dr. Muhammad Al-Zaman bin Arifin from School of Education, Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, UTM. 
It is my pleasure to be a moderator for this plenary session on the topic of delivering TVET online Malaysia experience. Now we are having Dr. Zainal Azhar Zainal Abidin from Division of Instructional and Digital Learning, Department of Polytechnic and Community College Education, Ministry of Higher Education Malaysia. For your information, our honorable speaker has a degree in Housing, Building and Planning Architecture from USM a master holder in science of education technology and also a PhD holder in design education. And uh, for your information, his interest is in digital learning and emerging technologies in education. As I've, I've mentioned just now, he will deliver a plenary speech titled Delivering Tibet Online, the Malaysian uh, experience. Without uh, further ado, I would like to invite our honorable speaker, Dr. Zainal Azhar, Zainal Abidin to deliver his speech. So. Uh, Dr. Nana, uh, the virtual stage is yours. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. Uh, first of all, thank you very much to the organizers of Nali and Dr. Miman for this uh, for the kind introduction and also for allowing us uh, Tibet to share our experience uh, as part and parcel of Nali so that we can all learn from uh, each other. So, uh, welcome to uh, the BIPD, JPPKK, SELP to you. This is where most of our uh, webinars are, are being uh, broadcasted from. Uh, so, this is our small streaming studio that we set up. And uh, uh, this is where we conduct uh, lots and lots of online meetings and also online seminars. So, today uh, we are part and parcel of the, uh, a bigger agenda uh, when we are under uh, as, as we go on under Nali. Right? So uh, before that, uh, let me also uh, introduce to you uh, Dr. Rosaimin, he's not in the camera. He'll be handling my slides and also uh, he'll be showing some videos as we would like to share with you what uh, is available in our Generation TVET uh, websites and so on and so forth. Okay, so without further ado, let me start my, my slide. Okay, so the title that is uh, given to me is Delivering TVET Online, the Malaysian Exper uh, Experience. Uh, this is something that uh, we have been looking at, especially our division for some time. And uh, there are a lot of things that I would like to share with you. Things that work for us, things that might not work for, for you, things that we feel that we, we, we need to have more uh, hands-on experience so that we can sort of make it better and so on and so forth, right? Next. So uh, an introduction of who we are. This is where we are situated, the Galeria building in Facing Empat. This is Jabatan Pendidikan Polytechnic and College Community. Uh, those are the logos up there. You can find us from floor four until floor, floor uh, seven. Next. Uh, and a brief introduction again of our polytechnics. There are 36 uh, polytechnics located within Malaysia. Uh, three of them are premier polytechnics, uh, and then the rest are either uh, conventional polytechnics or the metro polytechnics. So 36 polytechnics uh, are located throughout Malaysia. Then these are the college communities. They have a higher number than the polytechnics, uh, 104 college communities. So we are looking at about 140 institutions uh, within uh, JPPKK that we have to look and, and take care of and sort of guide as far as online learning is concerned. And a bit of uh, fakta ringkas, uh, if you, you just have spare time, uh, just to understand our numbers, our enrollment as far as the polytechnics are concerned and our enrollment as far as the college community is concerned. We are very much also into PS. PSH, as far as the college community, uh, their role is within the PSH and, and the polytechnics are doing lots and lots of uh, structured courses, right? Okay, next. Next. Uh, so this is who we are. Um, we are from the Instructional and Digital Learning Division. And uh, we call ourselves Center for E-Learning and Teaching or Inspiring Learning. Um, but what we do here is that we, uh, we make, we plan and come up with strategies to, uh, to ensure that our institutions, that 140 institutions that are under us 
uh, are well equipped, well knowledgeable about uh, the e-learning or the digital learning, and uh, we provide with them contents, we provide them training and equipment so that uh, the Polytechnic can move uh, in tandem with uh, the new requirements of digital learning. Next. Uh, a bit of definition about TVET. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of this. Uh, this is taken from UNESCO. Um, uh, the technical educational, uh, technical and vocational education and training is understood as comprising of education, training, and skills development. And the other one is occupational fields production and livelihood. So the three aspects that makes up the TVET. This is something I think I've got to make very, very clear in the beginning. This is our focus. Uh, within TVET uh, in higher education, we have got education, training and skills. Of course, being in higher education, uh, we, we sort of uh, spend more time on education as it tapers down to skills and development, right? So uh, this is, and uh, as it, the word occupational there suggests that we are very, very much uh, close with the industries. And our, our, the way that we plan our teaching and learning online and the contents that we develop are also contents that the industry is very much a part and parcel of, as you would, as you shall see here. Yeah? Next, so uh, this is TVET as far as the uh, higher education is concerned. Uh, so I'll be talking about their online TVET activities, and uh, this is coming from the Center of E-Learning and Teaching. Okay, all right. So this is the whole um, uh, continuum of of our work. Yeah? We have got uh, online TVET. They are broken up into three sections. Uh, we have got Tibet theory classes, we have got Tibet practical classes, we have got Tibet industrial guidance uh, sessions, right? So this is very much following what our curriculum has sort of designed and, and, and have been developed. These three aspects are very much there. So our job as an instructional division is to make sure that each of these three uh, categories are being given due time, are being given due effort, and uh, so that uh, our lecturers can uh, use uh, our technology and our pedagogy and, and so on and so forth uh, to ensure that, that the education is of, uh, of quality. So uh, we have got TE, TVET Online, LMS. We have under practical, we, have, we are concentrating on ETVET immersive, immersive, immersive learning. And under uh, TVET Industrial Guidance, we have got uh, industrial, ETVET Industrial Guidance. Three big, big chunks of uh, scope of work that we are concentrating on. And uh, today for our presentation, I would like to share the six elements that we consider as our main components of online TVET. Yeah? The first, of course, is ETVET uh, e LMS, followed by ETVET uh, e eContents, and we have got our ETVET Gogi, or I mean, there's no better word for it, right? So I'm using, I'm just using that word. And then ETVET e-community, ETVET learning spaces, and finally ETVET e-dollar. So we'll be going through one by one to see uh, how everything is connected and what does it mean within our scope of uh, the TVET world in JPPKK, right? So next, we begin with the uh, LMS. Now the LMS uh, is, uh, has been around for some time, uh, since 2007. Uh, it is known as CDOS, yeah? and this is part of its portal. And uh, the LMS has been uh, helping us a lot, especially during the COVID uh, and, and uh, also before that, because most of our lecturers are using this LMS to put up their contents and uh, classes have been going on before the COVID in blended form. Now within the COVID, it's going on almost fully online. So the LMS is at, is at its peak and uh, we are continuously improving the LMS as there are also challenges that we face uh, as far as the LMS is concerned, right? Next, this is to show that uh, the number of polytechnics and courses and lecturers and students that, that are in uh, the CDOS or our LMS, uh, just a word of uh, reminder that the LMS is, was uh, designed originally for the Malaysian polytechnics. The, the college communities are not yet part of the, uh, of the LMS, so we have only got 36 institutions. The rest of 104 are yet to be brought in uh, as part of the LMS. Again, the, the role of the college community is slightly different. Uh, they, they are more hands-on and thus they, they are not uh, required to do any form of blended learning. They have got 30% less than 30% of theory classes. So their role will be different once they enter the LMS. Right? So that is one, that is the ETVET uh, LMS. 
Next, we go to the e-contest. Now, this is, this is where we spend lots and lots of our time. Uh, I would like to share with you the type of contents that we have come up with. And of course, these contents can be used and can be shared by anyone and can be assessed by anyone because it's online, right? First of all, let's have a look at this, the glossary that we have come up with uh, uh, as far as our TBED contents is concerned, right? Of course, you've got the PDFs, you've got the books and flips and all of that. So what I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to concentrate is the uh, online contents as far as the videos, video and video art is concerned. So there are six types of contents that we have, we have sort of categorized and developed. The first one begins with the traditional videos. Now, now you have seen them uh, throughout uh, your studies and it's been very popular uh, for the past few years and so on, but it's changing. So it's very, the storytelling is very much in a linear form, it's technical format, it's very much videos, and they are, we, use, we use it for interviews, for close-up scenarios, and so on and so forth. So even though we are going on with the emerging technologies, the role of the traditional videos is still uh, here to stay. It's got, it's got its strength and we are still producing lots and lots of traditional videos. The next category of videos are the 360 videos, right? The 360 videos are videos that uh, you, you need to use your handphone uh, at least so that you can view it uh, at 360 degrees. This is where our immersive, uh, immersive uh, category begins. Huh? Uh, as far as our students are concerned, we use our 360 videos uh, to bring them to places where it's difficult for them to visit or requires them to visit often. So uh, the immersive videos are videos that um, breach that, that issue that we have, especially with us, uh, where the industries uh, uh, will not always allow us to be part and parcel of, of any visit because it's quite difficult for them to entertain us uh, frequently. So students are using these contents as an immersive uh, simulation experience. So that is 360 videos. I'm sure you have seen them. Uh, the next one is I360 videos. I stands for interactive because uh, with this I360 video, students can either using their, their eye or a certain uh, remote control, uh, click on certain interactive buttons and learn more about certain aspects of the, of, of the place that they are visiting. So we're looking at that and seeing how, what it means by the I360. The next one we have got a virtual reality. Again, this is something very uh, common. You have heard the virtual reality is allows students to be in a virtual environment, also still immersive, uh, whereas the 360 videos are actual, uh, real uh, environment. The virtual environment is an environment that is built up three dimensionally. Then we have got our interactive uh, virtual reality where as, as the interactive 360 videos are, they are the same, they are the same categories, right? Uh, instead, the students can interact with these, uh, the, any interactive elements that are on the IVR uh, scenario to, for them to learn more. And finally, we have come up with uh, what is known as the IGVR, Interactive Game Virtual Reality. It's still interactive virtual reality, but it's got an element of a game We'll be sharing with you uh, what we mean by IGVR. Uh, so it is completes our whole the whole stable of our our contents that we are uh, building and will continue to build and share with everyone who's interested in using them. Right. Next, uh, let's begin with the first one, which is the Generation TVET. Uh, these are the videos, normal traditional videos. There are about 200 or 300 videos. And most of them are being conducted, uh, interviewed uh, with our industry partners or industries. Uh, so that we have got industrial guidance videos. We have got uh, generation, generation TV instructional approach videos, and so on and so forth. Uh, the contents have been start. We have started to build this content long, long time ago. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the contents, if you were to go into generation TV mixed. You will find that uh, we have Arwa Yasmin Ahmad being interviewed. Uh, and then, uh, when, when, the, when she first re released her film, uh, Yes, uh, Sepet. So that's, it's there. Uh, it's part of our archive. It's everyone for everyone to see and share. Uh, it's for the, gen the generation that we have start started to call the, the TVET generation, right? So next, we have our own website. Uh, you can scan uh, the QR code there to uh, straight away uh, 
be part of that uh, website. This is where you can click on the buttons of the immersive learning. And this is the contents where you have 360 videos, I360 videos, and so on for, uh, for the students to be part of an immersive environment. Next, we, this is part of that uh, immersive videos, as I, as I was saying. Uh, for example, if you look at the extreme left, we have got inspection and maintenance of a substation now. We all know it's not, it's not that easy to get into a substation. Uh, it's all off limits. Uh, so what we did was uh, at this particular polytechnic, uh, we got our cameras inside and did a 360 and uh, we followed our curriculum so that our students would know what is in a substation, what are the things that they should do in the substation uh, before, we, before um, being allowed into uh, a substation, right? So, uh, so this kind of uh, uh, contents are being uh, um, put up in our website, as you can see the one above. So the middle one is automotive workshop. I think I'll show you that later on. And designing sustainable building. This is the PKNS building that we have uh, sort of did a, a photography, uh, videography session uh, for our students to learn more about sustainable uh, design. Yeah. Next, these are the rest. We have got a boiler operation. We have got a warehouse operation uh, where we did one with PKT Logistics. They brought us into their own warehouse and they showed us all the parts of the warehouse. This is for our logistics students. Before they go into the particular industry, they are experiencing an immersive experience uh, within the warehouse, right? Next, this is some of the screenshots of uh, what we, we, I was telling you about the i360 videos. Uh, so it's virtual, it, it, sorry, it's 360 is immersive and it has got those uh, buttons that are interactive. Uh, so that's part of the, uh, of the curriculum. Uh, so students can click on the buttons and jump to a different portion of the uh, warehouse and their quizzes and their videos and their 360 uh, experiences, right? Next, uh, this is another part of the video uh, showing that this is the receiving process of the warehouse and students can look at this warehouse and understand how the process of logistics is being applied as far as the West, West uh, warehouse management is concerned, right? Next. This is another interesting I360 video uh, that deals with coral identification, coral diving. So uh, we did this with a 360 uh, crew. We went to a certain place in East, uh, in uh, Borneo, and we, we went underwater and we tried out our cameras. And what I, I'll be showing you some, what. Uh, what are the contents there, uh, but it's for tourism. It's for our students who are, uh, are studying about uh, coral, uh, deep uh, fish identification and so on. So instead of diving, uh, you know, spending time diving excessively, uh, the students can first experience this before actually going to the real site. Yeah. Next. Uh, this is again another shot of that coral habitat 360, uh, I360, uh, video that will be showing to you. Again, these are uh, coral basic identification. Yeah. Next. Uh, then, of course, we have got the virtual reality. This is nothing new. Uh, students will be fixing, or in this case, I think they are putting up, uh, fixing their PCs, I think, uh, or understanding the component of a PC, how you put things together, the RAM and the ROM and so on, the fan and how you put it together. So understand, this is TVET. And this is very much uh, something that we have got to do uh, when students are not able to hold and touch and feel uh, a PC in front of them or being a lab, right? What they can do is they can use this as much as possible. But I'm not saying that this will replace the actual hands-on, no. This is sort of a simulation, uh, enriching their minds first, making sure they understand what they are supposed to do before they go in and actually touch the, the real stuff, right? Next, we have got uh, IGBR. This is what I'm talking to you about, the IGBR. First of its kind, I think, for us, we have combined students from the structure and architecture students in the first or second years. We have designed a game for them. And uh, this game is basically a very simple game where students uh, are to uh, design a simple bungalow, or a simple one-story or two-story building where they have to identify the, the strengths 
of each column and the strengths of each beams and they put it up and then as you can see on the top right of the of the, of the slide we after they have designed it we uh, we sort of uh, distribute weight on it on it until it crumbles and when it crumbles the students can go in and actually see which beam gave away which uh, column gave away and of course from that they can learn more about structure and more about spaces so these are the few uh, design uh, e-contents that we have come up with next so let's see a few examples so uh, we'll be looking at the uh, we'll be looking at the first one is the pkt logistics yeah so this is a warehouse it's a logistic warehouse in uh, the one in Shahalam, uh, and uh, this is how it looks like. This is our 360 video, so students can sort of be there already without being there. And we call this our immersive uh, experience. So we can click uh, one of them, start lesson. You can learn more about the learning outcome. And uh, so, yeah, so we even have our own industry partners uh, being part of our education uh, contents. So uh, here we have uh, someone from the Lighthouse PKT Logistics giving a guide, uh, as a guide, as he brings us into the PKT Logistics. So students can look at this and look at the whole 360 experience, right? So, so, so let's go, let's follow him. So students will be using this. So he brings us to the types of warehouse that are uh, available, that is available at, at the PKT Logistics. So let's just let's, let's see one example of it types of equipment so again this is following our curriculum uh, so uh, as the students are uh, learning this they can view this right so uh, so this is an, a warehouse and the student and uh, and, and, and the uh, Mr. Long is uh, sort of giving instruction of what is there what types of equipment can you find in uh, in, in a warehouse warehouse as, as big as this right so we have got uh, this kind of uh, elements you have got this kind of equipment you can see the packing space you can see the non-pack uh, the where where the loading and uploading happens the, the, the equipments and so on and so forth so i won't spend much time here it's all there for you to go and experience and see the types of warehouse or uh, several other topics for you so so you can see in a 360 form, how this thing has been experienced by our students, right? Next, we will look at the coral, uh, the, the coral, yeah, that's the one, coral habitat, uh, to see uh, how our underwater team uh, gone down and uh, did a bit of uh, underwater uh, videography for our students who are in the tourism uh, programs. Uh, so this is, again, another teaching and learning video. Uh, that we look. Uh, so this is the area that we went and visited, right? Uh, so and and then we can start jumping into the uh, blue water to see uh, more of the corals and how they are all modules here based on the curriculum. So students can pick any one of them. So let's pick one. Yep. Okay. And there we go. We are now under there, and uh, the students will be learning more about the corals and identifying types of corals. All right. Uh, so uh, this will make it uh, something slightly uh, a bit more interesting for our students as they they do not all of them do not have a chance uh, to go diving eh? especially the OKU students right so these videos will give them uh, a sense of what it means to be underwater what type of corals are there and for them to identify yeah? and appear very much like rocks that is why they are called Building right, so we can go 360 and have a look. Uh, what's behind here? Yeah. So all these contents are being used by the students who are in the tourism and hospitality, and they are free for anyone else who wants to download it and have and experience the immersive experience. Right. Uh, lastly, I'll be showing you the IGVR. This is from a YouTube video. Uh, you'll, be, you'll be watching. Uh, okay, let's start. Let's start it. Okay, uh, this is the IGBR video. Uh, students from architecture and design, the first early years, will be using this video for them to experience 
what is it like building a, a structure, a, a building using basic structure, and uh, how uh, how it feels to be in an enclosed space, and what makes up uh, different types of uh, structures. So there you can choose. They'll be choosing the column types. There's the weight and the, the, the certain attributes of the column that they have to choose and they have to ar arrange. And then once it's it's ready. Uh, the architecture students can come in and put in their design. Remember, it's a semester one, semester two students uh, who have yet to understand what space is all about, what de what design is all about, what colors is all about, and how a space comes together uh, three-dimensionally. So they do this, and, and uh, as when they complete this, uh, they have to test the, 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 the structure, and this is where the game starts. Uh, uh, to see whether uh, the structure can withhold or withstand the uh, the, the amount of weight that they have put up. So two groups will be playing this game, and there will be a time factor, and let's see within a few minutes who comes up with the better building and have the higher score uh, according to the design that they have they have uh, sort of uh, done beforehand, right? So there the building is completed, and then I think they are going to test. Uh, Yeah, so you can go in and so on. So a lot of our students in the Polytechnic Hong Kong have been using this as a pilot uh, project. And there you got the weights coming in, right? The weights coming in and we are testing to see whether the building crumbles at a certain weight as they have predicted, right? Uh, so the red beams you see there are the beams that are weak. Uh, those are the ones that they have to relook again and see how it fits into their uh, original design. Right? So those are the types of e-contents. There's a lot of e-contents that we have designed and we would like to share with, you know, with everyone. So we were to, uh, if I were to go back to our slides, um, we have, that, that is us. Uh, next, we will go to the e-goggy e or the teaching and learning of uh, using these contents, right? Uh, the latest, of course, we have got our normal type of uh, courses that we do to train our educators and so on. But the latest type or the latest format that we find most uh, easy, especially now with the COVID, is the webinars. So recently, we sort of uh, conducted a, a huge, uh, a big webinar, uh, webinar that ran for what, about three weeks. Uh, so next, uh, we see that these are everyone there has participated in, in this webinar and there were 40 slots. It took, it took us three weeks to finish. This was very much part of our, our strategy when the COVID first hit us. How do we re-educate our, our lecturers and put them, put them on uh, the online bandwagon? As you can see there, there's some, some very famous figures. We have got uh, professors from USM and from UTHM and so on and so forth. Right? So uh, this, uh, this whole webinar was, uh, was conducted in three weeks. We had international participants, we had local participants, and we had lo lots of our lecturers. We were very, very, very surprised when lots of our lecturers came up and shared with us our experience. We never expected them to have such an experience for them uh, to share with us. So, so this is how we came up with our teaching and learning. And we're going to ex explore this, we're going to expand this, and uh, each time making it more interesting and more fruitful for our audience, right? Next, besides this, we had a second and a, and a third webinar. This is our second webinar, where it was with Dr. Denise Cox from Victor University, Australia. Very interesting, uh, where she talked about practical fundamentals of good online TVET. It's all online, it's all been recorded uh, on that website that uh, we, we shared with you. And we also spoke with UNESCO in Univoc. Remember, we are part of TVET. Uh, they're also part of our ecosystem uh, so that we talk about the future of Tibet as a conversation we had uh, and we shared a few things with them and we also looked at how China is uh, conducting their Tibet courses and we compared notes, right? Next, we have got the community. These are our superheroes, right? As I said, when we did the webinar, we found out that, wow, there were so many lecturers who are already into it. And we were surprised and we call these people our superheroes, right? So uh, again, I'd like to share some with you. That, that's loads of them. Let's look at them. This is our first team from Polisas. Uh, this group of, of lecturers designed their first light, what do they call this? A light, uh, a light board, 
a light board uh, uh, for them to uh, write on so that they can use it as part of their teaching, uh, virtual teaching and learning. So this was used, was designed as was already used in our June uh, 2020 uh, during the COVID uh, time. Uh, so it has been successful. The YouTube channel is there. The QR code is there so you can have a look at it, right? Next, uh, we have got, uh, I'm just going through, this is English classes. Uh, who are, these are lecturers who have used numerous platforms and apps and uh, to, to ensure that their online English classes are going on smoothly and uh, they have been getting so much positive response from the students, right? Next. Uh, this is something also interesting. This is from College Community. Remember, TVET is also very much into skills and practicals. We're not just into education. Uh, these two lecturers from College Community before has taught online uh, using a uh, few, few of the uh, apps how to uh, carve a fruit. Uh, these are two lecturers from the culinary and hospitality uh, program. Uh, so they've managed to conduct a virtual class uh, using uh, all the apps that we uh, they can must and uh, to, uh, to conduct a very effective uh, culinary fruit carving uh, course, right? Next, again, this is another TVET from College Community. This is where students from automotive are being given an immersive and early on experience of how, uh, what, are the, what are the things that they should understand in an automation, in, 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 in an automotive workshop, right? So all of these have been using online technology. And these are the people who have been exploring it, right? Uh, this is electrical and electronics. Next, we have, uh, these are some of the lecturers who are into teaching, learning, education, flip classroom, and so on and so forth. This is the education side, theories, classes. Uh, but these are all our, our heroes and our heroines who have been using these technologies effectively. Yeah? Next. Then we have got our learning spaces. Number five, we've got two more. Bear with me. All right. Number five, we've got ETVET learning spaces. All right. Next. These are our four different types of learning spaces that we are already designing for our uh, polytechnics and college communities. We call our learning spaces technology-enabled collaborative classroom. There are four types. Of, uh, the first one is just a normal smart classroom with your regular projectors and so on. We call this TECC 1.0. TEC 2.0 is a collaborative classroom with more technology equipment. Uh, this has already become a main, uh, a main uh, image in all the polytechnics, they have got this uh, TCC 2.0s in almost all of the polytechnics. Then we're coming up with a TCC 3.0 and 4.0, where 3.0 will concentrate on digital maker space. We call these spaces the digital garage, and they'll be using it for their final year projects, uh, where augmented reality is also part of, their, uh, of what they'll be using as part of the uh, TECC 3.0. And last but not least is the TECC 4.0, or we call them the VR adventure. This is where all the contents that we have seen just now are being, will be a part and parcel of that uh, space so that students can come in and experience them as, as much as possible. So we have got the first TECC 2, 3, and 4 are very much a collaborative in nature, whereas 3 and 4 is very much immersive. Next. Idola, this is our competition equivalent to ACRI. This, are, this is our eighth year. Uh, we have been doing this. And the, on the right, we have seen the kinds of competition from video creation to tech innovators, uh, pedagogy. We have come with MOOC masters. We have come up with an uh, TPAC tools where students sing out their, their classes, their, their notes, and so on using an a cappella type of approach. Thank you. And also, uh, this is uh, the, another competition is in Mission Immersible now with our 360 uh, contents being developed by lecturers. How do they use that in their teaching and learning uh, approaches, right? Next, this is IDOLA 2020 uh, because everything is online. This is the first time this year we're having it online as well. So uh, as of now, I checked this morning, the amount of views is still increasing. It's got 1,600 views on YouTube and uh, this is the first Idola online. Uh, the, the reason is that we are asking our lecturers to go online uh, when it comes to our own uh, initiation of, or our own program. We also have to do something that is online so that it matches what the lecturers in our institutions are doing. So this is it. Huh? So this is the final Idola uh, 2020. Next. 
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the six components of TVET online as far as JPP, uh, JPP KK is concerned. All of that must happen at the same time. Without the learning spaces, the e-contents are a bit uh, left out. Uh, you know, uh, we need the spaces for the students to really explore and learn, especially the VRs. So everything is connected together. You have got the pedagogy, you must have the learning spaces, you must have the heroes and the communities. And then, of course, in the end, we have got our uh, award appreciation, appreciation night with Idola, where we tie in everything together and give the best of the best to those who have produced the best contents, come up with the best pedagogies, the, our heroes, and who those who have used our learning spaces. Next, I would like to end with this. In, this is one of my favorite uh, quotes from Apple way back then. Here are to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round packs in the square holes, the one who sees things differently. They are not fond of rules. They have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Thank you very much. Back to you, sir. Right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zainal Azhar, Zainal Abidin, for the wonderful and inspiring speech. I think many will agree with me. That's very uh, interesting sharing just now. Uh, and with that, uh, ETVET Gogi, the ETVET LMS, TVET e Content, ETVET, uh, what we call Learning Space, uh, the ETVET Idola. At least we know that uh, the future of TVET uh, is not as bad as uh, what we thought. Eh? especially those who are involved in uh, TVET uh, field. Uh, before we proceed, maybe I, I can read some of uh, the questions that we have in the Facebook. Uh, yeah. So this one is from uh, our organizer. Actually, it's, it's from somebody. Uh, please pass my question to Dr. Nana. Uh, in regards to the health-related field, the health education institution, is there any option in using the advanced technology in achieving the student skill? So this one is specifically in the health uh, education institution. Okay, thank you for that question. Uh, first of all, uh, within our point, JPPKK, we do not have a health uh, education or health related program. Uh, but this is what I know uh, from my experience of uh, doing uh, research and so on and so forth. Uh, nothing can replace the actual you of touching a human anatomy and being part of that whole environment. But what, what, what can happen is very much as the VR and the 360 that we are concerned is to increase the awareness and the level of enrichment that the students can learn before they go down and actually do their work. Probably the, that, that will control the cognitive aspect of the whole uh, uh, teaching and learning or the whole uh, TVET experience. No doubt the students have got to, do, to go and touch and do whatever is necessary with their hands. But if the time they need to do that can be lessened uh, as, as they learn more and more things online. Uh, if, if, the, if the contents are being uh, developed appropriately and the outcomes are being, uh, being, uh, being addressed appropriately, I think, I think the things that the students need to know can be delivered before the students actually go down and, and, uh, and uh, do their hands-on uh, exercises. Again, I'm saying in TVET, that's our difficulty. We have got that practical mm -hmm. session that you cannot replace. The psychomotor part has got to be done uh, physically. Uh, you can learn online as much as possible. You can create online simulations, uh, mm -hmm. but in the end, you have got to go and touch the human body or the engine or the kitchen. You have got to be there and so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we have another question, uh, Dr. Nana, from Nurul MA. Uh, Assalamualaikum, Dr. Nana. Uh, how Polytechnic and College Community uh, conducting calculation-based courses by online? Can you share with us? Uh, remember the white the board that I showed you, uh, the one that was being designed by Polisas, right? I'm looking at uh, Thomas, I can't remember. So uh, that is 
one of the uh, methods that we are using uh, or the lecturers are using for to uh, conduct calculation based courses because as you know calculation you have got to go there you have to see your face there are certain things that uh, they, they, the interaction is very important uh, visually so they've come they've come up with that kind of of uh, of uh, equipment for them to conduct the calculation courses of course you have got your tablets you can do that on tables you can have your cameras on top and you can do your uh, math calculation calculation and so on everything can be streamlined or recorded online and it can be uh, you know uh, downloaded later on for the students to see. So uh, I don't see a, a, a problem with calculation-based courses. Uh, the, the only problem is uh, the communication with the student and the lectures, the feedback. And that is the thing that sort of, uh, that's the pedagogy, if you want to, the, the, the thing that we have got to understand and uh, to uh, resolve. Uh, because when the students feel left out, there's this gap there's no, not much, uh, there's no frequent uh, feedback, uh, then the whole online experience will fizzle out. Oh, we still have uh, more questions coming. <laughs> this one from uh, uh, Ruby Juliana Lin. Uh, given the six pillars you have, how did you sing each pillar to see milestones of it is valid with the performance of the warriors? I mean, uh, she mean by the lecturers. How do you sing each pillars to see milestones of it is valid? Okay, let me try to understand that question. Uh, so, so that uh, with the performance of the words. Okay, let me just explain uh, that, that six uh, components again. As I said, each component has got its strength. And when you strategize them, you cannot do it in a linear format, right? Uh, because it doesn't work that way, right? You have to plan in a more like a spider web kind of uh, a strategy where everything is being carried up, uh, everything is being built, but in small proportions so that they, they can feed on each other's strengths and it can move the students, uh, sorry, the lecturer's uh, motivation forward. Now, Idola is a very important vehicle, right? Uh, it looks like it's just an award show but actually, it's something that is very, very important. Uh, this is where we, we conduct it every year to ensure that our lecturers, even our students are performing in IDOLA. The contents are being designed by our students, not just lecturers, right? So we are awarding them and we're telling them, look, this is the best content that you can, uh, we have seen. So these are the prizes for you. So that, that component of it is very important. At the same time, we've got to see teacher training. We have got to see learning spaces are being developed so that when the contents are ready, the spaces are ready. Uh, if not, these two will, will fall apart, right? Uh, but I'm not saying that everything is happening as planned and as, as far as uh, self is concerned. Uh, we have got our challenges. We are always trying to work uh, our best yeah, so that the six components that I've, I've told you uh, is something that we can achieve as best as we can. Especially now, uh, with the COVID in place, uh, we are finding new challenges coming up. But that doesn't mean that doesn't stop us from moving, for, from moving further because of this hero, online heroes that we have. We have discovered now. To us, this is a big, big boon for us, right? A big reward for JPPKK. These lecturers are experimenting on their own and they have not shared it with anyone. Suddenly, all of a sudden, when we do our webinars, they've come up from the woodwork and they're sharing with us. Now, this shows how innovative people are, but they've been keeping quiet all about this. So that's the strength and we use those strengths as small as they can be or as big as they come. And so we put them together into this jigsaw puzzle and we hope that the jigsaw puzzle makes a clear and beautiful objective that is to move TV education as far as online education forward. Okay, uh, so uh, we don't have uh, more questions from the Facebook, but I, I have uh, a questions for you. <laughs> can, can I ask a question? <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, uh, as you uh, as you mentioned just now, we have uh, about the six pillars. Uh, that one is the practice uh, or, or the strategies uh, by uh, Polytechnic, right? I mean uh, JPPKK uh, as as an institution, as a TVET institution. So that's the initiative taken uh, by the institution. 
So, uh, and I also learned that uh, from, from, from the talk, uh, the VR, especially the, the virtual reality is an essential element uh, in terms of the e-content because uh, that, that is uh, the closest to the reality. Uh, is, it be, be, is it because, uh, is it developed because of uh, the pandemic, COVID-19? And should we come out uh, with a standard uh, initiative uh, uh, nationwide? I mean, like th that one is from the Polytechnic, right? So should we come up with a standard guideline uh, or standard uh, initiative? Uh, okay. uh, thank you. Uh, well, the contents were not developed for COVID. It has always been our intention to bring immersive experience to our students. Uh, being in a TVET institution, we find it difficult for our students to visit these places underwater or into a warehouse or whatnot uh, as frequently as they would like to. So with, even without the COVID, we found that the immersive uh, contents that we have designed may be uh, a game form or may be interactive or just visual, uh, 360 is so very, very important for our students. Uh, so no, we have not developed it before. But when COVID came, it became something that was uh, really useful for our students. Uh, so that uh, without being there, uh, they could go there now, right? All they need is their, of course, their bandwidth. That, that's something else uh, that um, is uh, besides uh, what we, uh, we, we want to talk about, right? Uh, so the, the contents are there. Now, the second part is uh, standardization. Of course, we can talk about standardization. Uh, we can come up with basic generic standards, right? Uh, but I always also believe that innovation uh, is something that uh, doesn't grow that well within a structured uh, environment, right? You must leave enough room for our, for our developers to come up with interesting and innovative uh, types of content. Uh, so that our, our the contents that can be used by our students uh, of quality and value and, and constantly uh, enriching and entertaining. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Uh, we are now actually approaching uh, the end of the session. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Nana, our speaker from Department of Polytechnic and Community College Education for his uh, plenary speech. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Nana, uh, and thank you, everyone, uh, for for your for your time. So the next session, which is tomorrow, will be on the topic of recalibrating STEM education for Malaysia by Dr. Ehsan Ismail, Senior Principal, Assistant Director, National STEM Center Education Planning and Research, Division Ministry of Education Malaysia. All of you are invited to join the sessions. Thank you very much for your participation in these sessions. Uh, I hope you really enjoy it and become excited to renew your commitment to teaching and learning, particularly in TVET, uh, as we spoke it just now, and education uh, in general. Thank you again, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Welcome to Nali 2020. Nali 2020 Nali 2020 Nali 
Visit our Nali Exhibition Virtual Booth. Just follow two simple steps to get there. First, you go to the Facebook page of Nali 2020. Second, you find the photo tabs and then click on the photo album of Nali 2020 Virtual Exhibition. You're now able to view all the posters of Nali practices in teaching and learning. Do enjoy our virtual exhibition booth and the poster with the most likes will be awarded the People's Choice Award. So visit us now and don't forget to like and share. Visit our Nali 2020 Symposium. Just follow this very simple step. First, check the Nali 2020 Symposium schedule in the website. Second, follow the schedule accordingly. Third, go to Facebook page Nali 2020. Fourth, you will see the pin post of the Symposium schedules accordingly in the pin post. Do enjoy your Symposium. You can also view all the session by first using the hashtag Nali 2020 Symposium or second, Find the photo tabs, then click on the timeline photo to view all the symposium presented by our participants. Do enjoy our virtual symposium session and ask questions directly to the speaker under the comment section and don't forget to like and share. Visit our virtual STEM competition. Just follow this very simple step. First, check the STEM Meet competition schedule in the website. Second, follow the schedule accordingly. Third, go to Facebook page Nali2020. Fourth, you will see the pin post of the STEM Meet schedule accordingly in the post. Do enjoy the STEM Meet competition. You can also view all the sessions in the video tabs. Then click on the video playlist STEM Meet competition to view all the STEM Meet presented by our participants. To enjoy our virtual STEM Meet competition and don't forget to like and share.